And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Silosaurus, which was a request from Morgan via our Patreon and Discord. So thanks. It was a Silosaurid dinosaur form that lived in the late Triassic in what is now Poland. When you said dinosaur form, unless you're going with the new Norman and Baron proposal that Silosaurs are in fact true dinosaurs. You're skipping ahead. Yeah, but you said dinosaur form. I had to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looked fairly dinosaur like. With the long tail and the long neck, and it walked on all fours. It had an elongated skull. It's estimated to be about the size of a large dog at seven and a half feet or 2.3 meters long. It was lightly built. It was probably fast and active. It had a narrow snout with nostrils that pointed forward, and it had large orbits in the skull, so probably had good vision. There were seven vertebrae in the neck, and it had a narrow pelvis and slender ribs that, according to the paper that described it, were, quote, strongly crushed, which made their preparation difficult. Yeah, getting crushed will do that. Yes. It also had long, slender legs and gracile front limbs. Which were, I guess, also legs, since you said it was quadrupedal. Yeah. In 2020... Pachowski and others looked at the posture and how the muscles of Silosaurus worked and found that the forelimbs were fully straightened and had smaller muscles for extending the limbs and retracting and bending, which is something we see in early sauropods. From that paper, they said it had this very slender humerus and slightly curved bone and limited forelimb pronation. The authors wrote, quote, the forelimb can make only short steps, prohibiting fast locomotion. But they found that, quote, the hind limb seems to have been capable of greater speed. So there were some adaptations to help Silosaurus improve its speed and flexibility with its forelimbs. And it had, quote, pillar erect hind limb posture similar to that of some pseudosuchians. Uh, before the group of ornithodirons, which encompasses Silosaurus, were thought to have, quote, only buttress erect limb postures. It had, quote, fully erected, end quote, forelimbs, like early sauropods. So kind of to sum up, it had a posture similar to early sauropods. But Silosaurus also had a shorter humerus, an arm bone, and a more elongated antibrachium, so it could, quote, make longer steps and gain greater speed than early sauropods, end quote. Interesting. Since you were saying the front limbs moved slower than the back limbs, I wonder if it ever did like a little bit of a bipedal scamper. Yeah, maybe. But it is interesting that it's so early on and probably was walking on all fours because usually when we talk about, well, early dinosaurs, we talk about the ones walking on two legs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's sort of what I was thinking too. <laughs> Which. We'll get to that in a little bit, but first, I want to talk about the beak on the lower jaw. It had a horny beak on the lower jaw and a relatively low tooth count. Its teeth were small and conical and serrated. Hmm. And Zeke, who named Silosaurus, wrote the teeth have, quote, rather low conical shape and worn tips and weak serration. It didn't have many teeth compared to early herbivorous dinosaurs, but she wrote, quote, in the shape of their crowns and pattern of serration, the teeth of Silosaurus are not similar to those of carnivorous dinosaurs, end quote. At the time, they thought that it was probably herbivorous. And so for a while, we thought Silosaurus was herbivorous. But then coprolites were found. Oh, a fossilized poop. Yes. And that showed that Silosaurus may have eaten insects, such as the beetle Triamixa, and it may have used its beak to peck on insects. In 2019, Martin Varnstrom and others published a study on the beetle bearing coprolites. They were, these coprolites were relatively large in size, so it shows that they didn't come from a small animal. They ranged in size from 1.2 to 2.1 inches, or 31 to almost 55 millimeters long. And they had a, quote, thin, smooth outer coating and were gray to brown in color, end quote. There was an abundance of beetles and smaller invertebrates in the coprolites that showed that, quote, the coprolite producer deliberately targeted beetles and similar small terrestrial invertebrates as prey. They found that in that area, the best candidate, as they put it, 
who made those copper lights was Silosaurus. Okay, so it's not like a slam dunk fossilized gut content situation. It's just like we in think. the same general area. Yeah, it just seems likely it was Silosaurus. Now, the anatomy of Silosaurus is similar to bird like theropods and modern birds. So the authors hypothesized that Silosaurus used its beak to, quote, efficiently peck small insects off the ground, a feeding behavior analogous to some extant birds. And they found that the coprolites were produced by some sort of medium-sized animal that went for these insects. And they said it was likely that this animal also regurgitated pellets like modern birds. So it's possible it regurgitated soft prey and plant fragments. Now, Silosaurus had some characters similar to birds with a shorter, more compact skull and keratinous beak. So to sum up this paper, these copper whites were found near Silosaurus fossils. Based on the size and shape of the copper whites, along with Silosaurus being beaky, hmm. makes it seem like these copper whites came from Silosaurus. The type species is Silosaurus opalensis. It was named by Jerzy Jik in 2003. The fossils were found in Silesia, Poland. The genus name means Silesia lizard, and it was found near the city of Opol, which is how you get the species name, Opolensis. It was found in a clay pit in Krasijau near Opol in southern Poland, and they found several hundred well-preserved bones. The paper that described Silosaurus said there was a, quote, accumulation of skeletons. And there was enough specimens in there that so that there was, quote, a virtually complete restoration of the skeleton. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, especially for something in the Triassic. A lot of times we don't have that good of fossils to go with. Mm-hmm. They collected more than 400 bones, and that included four partially articulated skeletons. Where the fossils were found, there was a lot of exposed claystone and mudstone, and it was soft and it easily disintegrated in water. So the fossils were a bit fragile. They were, quote, prone to destruction by weathering. But still, it's a lot of fossils. And it sounds like they got them out before they were destroyed, so that's good. Well, at least completely, yeah. <laughs> the type specimen is an incomplete skeleton. Silosaurus, the skull is known from some disarticulated bones, and that includes the jaw bones. In 2014, Piachowski and others proposed sexual dimorphism for Silosaurus. They analyzed the hip bones of 20 different specimens and found some differences in the muscle tendons, and they interpreted that mature females had statistically larger ossified tendons than proposed male specimens. Maybe. Maybe. It's <laughs> like we always talk about. It's really hard to tell sexual dimorphism in dinosaurs. Yeah. Everyone loves to propose it because there are a lot of potential candidates, but none of them are particularly compelling. Mm. The original paper that named Silosaurus said that it was a dinosauriform with the family uncertain. So we'll get a little bit into the phylogeny here. It's considered to be a dinosauriform and until recently not considered to be a dinosaur. It was lacking features such as an enlarged deltopectoral crest, which is the muscle attachment on the upper arm. But it did have some dinosaur characteristics, like a brevis shelf. It's a bone surface on the pelvis that was where the tail muscles could attach. The hip bones were also arranged like a saurischian. Though it did have a beak, it didn't have the predentary bone that we see in ornithischians. But it had leaf-shaped teeth which we also see in early Ornithischians, and it had some similarities to Ornithischians like Lesotosaurus. Zeek, in the paper describing Silosaurus, wrote, quote, Crompton and Attridge and Sereno proposed that prosauropods might also have had a narrow horny beak at the anterior end of the upper and lower jaws. He referred to a raised bony platform on the premaxilla in Riojasaurus from the Los Colorados formation of Argentina and in Platiosaurus, from the Nolan Mergel of Germany. This is hardly visible in the original illustrations, which means that these structures are not easy to discern. And this is not the case with Silosaurus, in which the area for the beak is prominent but restricted to the lower jaw. Oh, interesting. So it's got a sizable beak, but only on the jaw, not on the maxilla. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Which is what makes it different to Ornithischians. 
He also wrote, quote, these similarities to herbivorous dinosaurs may mean that one, Silosaurus is an early member of the Ornithischian lineage, two, belongs to the lineage leading to both the Ornithischia and Prosauropoda after its emergence from the ancestral carnivorous stock but prior to splitting, or three, form a lineage that developed herbivory independently of dinosaurs. The fossil record of the early late Triassic evolution of dinosaurs is too incomplete to make a reasonable choice, end quote. So it's pretty interesting we were having this debate right from the beginning of Silosaurus. Yeah, so yeah, it could be an Ornithischian. Or the second one is really interesting because they said it could be a lineage leading to Ornithischia and Prosauropoda, mm-hmm. which would mean that theropods were off on their own and Ornithischians and sauropods would be closer together. Yeah. Which is different than Ornithoscolida because that lumps Ornithischians and theropods together. So it's like another potential option for how dinosaurs could have lumped. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. And Zeke also wrote in the original paper that, quote, Silosaurus seems to be close to the point of origin of dinosaurs, both in respect to its structure and geological age. And he also wrote, it shows most of the characters listed by Novus as diagnostic apomorphies for members of the lineage leading to dinosaurs. And another quote is, much less obvious is the relationship of Silosaurus to dinosaurs as its skeletal anatomy is a rather bizarre combination of primitive and advanced characters, end quote. Yep. So it's really hard to classify. Yes. And partly that's because not enough of the skull and the hands have been found. But, Garrett, as you were bringing up earlier, as of 2022, it seems that Silosaurus are now considered to be dinosaurs. And back in episode 415, we covered, or Garrett, you talked about the latest on Ornithoscolida, which is that proposal from 2017 that Ornithischians evolve from theropods. And yeah, you just mentioned the combination (laughs) is Ornithoscolida. Uh, Authors Norman and Barron and others now think that Ornithischians evolved from Silosaurs after they analyzed early dinosaurs and included Silosaurs. Or more precisely that Silosaurs are Ornithischians, the first Ornithischians. Yes. And then later on, we got what we usually think of as Ornithischians. <laughs> yeah. And they're not the first ones to propose that. There's papers in the past that propose Silosaurs or Ornithischians, including a paper that described the Silosaur Sasisaurus. As a quick little background information, Silosauridae was named as a group in 2010 by Langer and others. And there's about a dozen Silosaurs. So it's a fairly recently named group. Mm-hmm. There's still some debate over what's included, such as Pisanosaurus, which we covered in episode 354 as the dinosaur of the day. And Silosaurus lived in a subtropical environment similar to the Mediterranean today, with monsoons in the summer and dry winters. Other animals that lived around the same time and place included fish, phytosaurs, and early pterosaurs. Hopefully, Silosaurs stay dinosaurs because I think it helps solve that mystery of where were all those Ornithischians in the Triassic. Yeah. Plus then we have more dinosaurs to cover in our Dinosaur of the Day. (laughs) True. We needed more. (laughs) (laughs) For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash I know dino or click the link on the left. (laughs) 